So Carl is trying to repair what we call the cursed drive or the, dia the diabolical drive, that's what you call it, Ken? It is diabolical? It's both diabolical and cursed. Yeah, everything, I mean, it has, it ruined a set of heads, it ruined our alignment cartridge, uh, everything we connected to, it ruins it too. It, it caused a loose wire in our drive just by sitting next to it. <laughs> And then, so this came from a collector on the East Coast. A former Xerox employee. Right. And she, she has multiple Xerox equipment. And, and it, it was crashing all the drives. So, so we figured a couple hours would put a new heads, get it aligned, send it back to her, but it's turned into more of an epic. <laughs> epic how, how long have we been on it? Two months? And so those are all the heads this disc went through. That was the original one, the, the bad heads there, you can, you can tell they were, they have been roughed up. Somebody tried to clean them with some kind of abrasive, and of course that completely destroyed the head. And then where, where's the one that did? This one, this one, this one, it just, so that's, that's the worst crash we ever had, it, if this can focus, it deformed the head, it just, the, the, the head didn't crash, it planted in the disc, which unfortunately was one of our alignment cartridges, um, and it just deformed the spring, so this one is bent. <laughs> Uh, and then it wouldn't seek, and then finally it would read, but it would corrupt the drives while reading them, so gee wee. So we are going to realign the heads for the... How many times have we aligned head on, the, on that disc? Four or, five, four or five times, right? The first set of head that crashed, then... This has a couple times until mm -hmm. because we weren't sure why it wasn't uh, reading or writing. But we're getting to be good at the process. Yes, so yeah. We're going to open up a Diablo repair shop, heads aligned while you wait. <laughs> exactly. I'm using the dry section on the head. We have a bad spot now in our disc, we have to jump past it. Spin it. At least it spins okay. Okay. So move it out, come on. And then keep your hand on that button until after it's loaded successfully. Yeah, and the button is so sharp. Mm -hmm. So we push it out to sector 100, so it's past the, the pits that we created in the alignment cartridge. So is this ready to let go? Okay, good. So now I go... I'll try to find if I have some signal somewhere. Nothing. How come? Well, yeah, the, the only thing should be recorded on here is it 100 and 105. Um, hey, I'm at 107. Cool. All right. Okay, well, I'm 106. I'm pretty close already. This one on four. One oh five. All right. Well, once you get it close, you go to a different scale on channel one. Yeah. Well, that's your job. Okay. So. Uh, I'm very loose. I don't like that. 
I'm sure. sure. Moving a little too easily for my taste. It still is. Okay, I'm gonna I stop before it's equalized and see if I can. Oh, I'm becoming good at this. Oh yeah. All right. Okay, so hold on. First, first bit done. is hooking up his diabolical FPGA tester to the diabolical drive because we can't um, we can't put a disc in the Alto uh, because the Alto tries to write on every disc you put on it even if you just want to read them and this disc will screw them up on drive so we can't test them on the Alto we have to test them with the FPGA setup And that fellow here, the zero zero zero, is the sectors, and it should read through all the sectors and tell us if we have errors reading, and then also dump what it is. So we're going to take the disk from the Alto. So the diabolical drive has screwed up our boot disk for the real Alto a couple times. There you go, so it is reading it. No error. No error, so it looks like we have aligned it correctly, and then you can see it here going through its spaces, reading, 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 reading. And then during that time, the FPGA is gathering all the information memory. Oh, this is, these are the bits. So our emulated Alto did boot off the data we read from the boot disk. So the boot disk uh, was read correctly from Michelle diabolical drive, Michelle's diabolical drive. So at least we are back to where we were. It reads correctly. Right. So we finally, after uh, we finally got it to read. But when it reads a cartridge, it corrupts it, which makes us think the right thing is wrong with it. It's, so. it's so close to working. We can we can boot it boots up and then things go back. Mm -hmm. We've been swapping boards with the good drives, and that doesn't seem to help our problems. Right. <laughs> so we basically hooked up our signals, our probe right to the head and uh, kind of the schematics going on back there so we're basically looking at this and there the read and write has the same head basically or yeah, right it's, it's one head yeah and There's then a read and erase and this is the erase one and Carl has his uh, the diabolical FPGA thing which is trying to write on the disk and we're going to write a sector and look at the four signals that come from the upper head. I think I'm armed, you can go, Carl. Boink, there you go. And unfortunately, it looks fine. <laughs> Isn't that the problem? Okay, and then we see the rest seems the same, right? We have our one bit. So it doesn't seem to be the logic writing the bits. So here we go. These are one bit, is over here. I lost it yet right there. Mm -hmm. The shorter one over here, and then there's a couple couple bits later on that I want. Yeah, there's a bit that says it's the upper head. Over here. Right. So unfortunately that it is what it was supposed to be, so how come we can't read it? So Michelle's drive is still not working and we have now change the heads once again and put a set that came from a known good drive which we call Carl's drive and that still didn't work so we're going to 
once and for all change everything. So we change, removed all the cars from Michelle Drives and put all the ones from Carl's Drive in. <coughs> and the suspicion is that it still will not work. It's something else. So we are trying for a negative experiment here. Okay. Heads from a known good drive. Boards from a known good drive. And we'll see if the ghosts are still in. My bet is that the ghosts are still in. Yes. <laughs> Carl, what's your bet? <laughs> you, you. This thing is well and totally possessed. <laughs> So now the ghosts have made it to my lights. So this, this is a, a haunted disc in a haunted house. <laughs> you know, if, if, if that doesn't do it, then the next step is an exorcist. Yes. <laughs> I, I asked him to bring holy water. <laughs> and it's full of blinking lights which means they are errors so it is not the head it is not the, the board. boards it is it, it's 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 it's, it's, uh, it's a ghost it's sheet metal <laughs> cables and i think your theory on the cable is good see if it was heads i could see well what if they were like you know Magnetized right. or something. But these this, are the dousing, but we've changed the yeah, heads. And, and these are the heads that worked with your drive and with the boards that work with the heads. So Carl is suspicious that something is happening in that little cable. Why don't so we want to try to do a time time domain reflectometry yeah, of the cables? Yeah, see see if we can have a fault. Okay, so we are we have brought in the uh, heavy artillery here, uh, so you know my good Infinium uh, modern scope, but uh, there is something that the old scope can do better, and uh, this Tektronix here is able to do time domain reflectometry. I have the pulse head, so it's, it's actually a very fast scope, this is a 10 gig scope, and I can test cables. The pulse generator that makes a super extra sharp pulse. And then pulse goes in the cable. And if there's any imperfection in the cable, a short and open comes back. You should see a demonstration. Uh, this is a, a 10 gig sampling head. And this is a pulse generator. So this guy makes pulses. Try to put it on the input here, and it's here. You go, goes zero, makes a pulse, and this is darn fast. It's um, this is 200 picosecond per division, and then there's a little time delay button here, which is a little dodgy. All right. So right now, this is sending a pulse. Uh, and this is a pass through, this is a loop through. So the pulse I'm going to put in a cable. It's all nice and matched. All right, so right now I have a cable terminated by nothing. So you should have a reflection. So I should have a reflection somewhere. Further to the right. Correct. So I'm going to increase the delay and look at the end of this. And here's the reflection. Okay, I'm going. We don't. It's not that far off. So, I'm going to the. So what basically? Yeah. Come on, knob. I have to get that knob here. Okay. Pulses comes out here. Travels in the cable up to here. Finds an open. Comes back. And you no know, uh, adds in phase. Right. So now. You have an open, short, and low termination. So if I put it on the short end, this is short. Okay, so now I have the short. And guess what happens? Now the reflection is inverted in polarity on the short and it subtracts. Yes. It cancels it. There you go. And it's a 50 ohm cable, and I've also 
in that open short load I have a 50 ohm termination. So now we are back to open, we see the reflection that adds and now I'm going to look well. That should be a load, but it's not. So I was expecting that thing to be straight, but it's not. There you go. Uh, because it's not making good contact. Yeah, sometimes I can't get it. There you go. So now it's loaded by 50 ohm. And look at how good it is. No, it will catch. First, it will tell you where the defect is, and it will catch any flaky connection right away. So it's a. Uh, TDR is a good way, so you use it to test you know, if your connectors are good or if your, uh, if your uh, RF lines are clean and well matched. Breaks in the cable. Right, and we're going to try to test it to see if our cables are good because it's such a simple way. So we could find nothing wrong with the cable themselves, uh, either OTDR or with an ohmmeter, but while we were looking deeper and more detail we found that this thing where we apply the pressure is not where it should be it should apply on the little ball that you see is on the side and that bar has been bent and actually I think it that's why we had the hard crash this was completely bent out uh, when we got the drive uh, probably wrong packaging or someone tried to pull it um, so maybe that's enough to not push the heads down far enough and cause the reading errors. Let's try and bend it. Well, I don't think there is any delicate fix for this. I no, have you to, have to just twist these two back slightly, compensate these, com these guys and slightly overdo it. Yeah, compensatory bend. Well, remember, it was bent out quite a bit. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, right, that's right, it was completely bent. Okay, so now we're better on the top. But the the test of truth, is it going to read it back? Is that errors? No errors. no errors. So now what we have to do is put her <sighs> cards and head back in, align it, right, and make and sure see, it's good, and then ship it back. And see if that works. Ah, oh, get rid of it. No, oh, that's a cheat. Absolutely. <laughs> and the lights stop flickering. Oh! <laughs> So now it's checking. Oh, no errors yet. Well, that's pretty good. We well, only get past we're, only on, we're only on the cylinder 30. So yeah, so we, we tend to have errors on the inner cylinders where, where it gets closer together. We can wear in that 158 already, no errors. Lights so are dimming. Then we'll do scavenger and see if that helps. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. Data head, compare error. Head zero. That's different head from before. That's strange. So can sort of reverse engineer or simulated in LT Spice the the circuit that controls the current. It's a weird circuit. It has all kind of resistors all mushed together, and to figure out what what we should do. So so basically, what we found is that on the inner tracks with the signal zero, it's going to put out about 70 milliamps, and on the outer tracks, it's going to go down to about 66 and a half milliamps. And that's the complicated circuit at the right, right? Yeah. Right. And, uh, and then if we if we add a second resistor here, um, we want to make this one what 470. 470. That's what I put. And then we'll just wire that in here, just in parallel. And now if we run the simulation, and then now, now the current we get is going to go from about 82 and 78. So 82 would be on the inner tracks and 78 on the outer tracks. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we'll try that. I mean, this is a, a fairly 
But the board is like this, so okay, you ruined my theory. It, it's just so inexplicable. There. So 470 ohms, it is. Okay. You have a header? Nah, I'll just solder it. We could do a multi-turn mm -hmm. adjustable. Well, if that one doesn't work, then it's... And we need to exercise more ghosts. That would be the next step, right? Okay, that's very, that's very fine. So now that I switch the high current for the inner cylinders. Scavenger is happier. So now scavenger is happy. Okay, boot it. Yeah, it's fine. And then run something? Yeah, yeah, it is booting. Yeah, just run the uh, pinball. Yeah, runs mm -hmm. raw, and then you... Yeah, it made a nasty sound, but it seems to work. Do you want to try to save a file, see if you can retrieve it? Save and we can boot, we can draw, we can save, we can retrieve the file. Should we call it a day? And we ship it back. Okay. Bye bye, drive. We're happy to see it go.